Uh huh. That's because you're gorgeous. No, it's because I look strange. I assure you that's not the case. It is true you have an unusual appearance. But right now, the unique color of your hair, your skin, and your eyes all serve to accumulate, accentuate your beauty. You sound like a prince, Lord Mel. What? You think so? I mean, it's would be a stand-in prince for you, but... I think you're a wonderful prince, not just a stand-in. Which makes you my princess, then. I, I don't... Oh, you're supposed to say, yes, I am. There. You're going to make me sad. Ah, oh, um, I... <laughs> I guess I'll just have to keep working at it until you submit. Oh, hey, the play's about to start. Um, what am I supposed to be doing? Nothing in particular. Just sit back and enjoy the show. Oh, but there is one thing. Yes? If I start dozing off, could you maybe wake me up? <laughs> oh no. Nelly's on her way. Ah. Ne what? Dearest Mel. Oh no. Oh no. I remember uh, the white hair girl said that she would never develop feelings for Mel to Nelly. Oh my god. Oh, it's gonna go down. Oh, Nelly's gonna be the bad ending of this whole scene. Oh my god. Nelly's going to drive this whole family down the drain. I can feel it. Nelly? Dearest Mel, why are you. What are you doing here? I. I. My asked her to join me. It's nothing to get worked up over. It is. It absolutely is. How many times did I ask you to come with me and you wouldn't? You don't even like theater, dearest Mel, and you bought her? You're right. I'm not especially fond of place, but I wanted her to be able to see one. Why are you making such a big deal out of this, Nelly? She's not suitable for you. What? She isn't good enough for you. Why would you choose her? She's creepy and you have no idea where she came from. Oh, come on, Nelly. Don't do that. Come on. Look at her. Don't talk about her like that, Nelly. But I don't even know who her family is. I do. What? Lord Mel, it's fine. You just stay quiet. Like the other maids, she'll come from a respectable house. Like the other maids, she comes from a respectable house. I looked into it. However, circumstances prevent me from telling you what house that is. No, you're lying. That can't be. Oh God, there's the bad ending. She's, but she's, she doesn't act like a lady. She lacks etiquette and she probably can't even dance. Expect me to believe someone like hers from a good house? Enough already, Nelly. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I don't think. Mel no, yelled at me. You have my word. You don't have to worry about her. So please, stay out of this, Nelly. It isn't any of your business if I spend time with her, is it? But, but dearest Mel. You need to stop hanging all over me, Nelly, and find someone for- Wait. What are you doing at the theater? Are you here alone? Ah. Oh yes, dear Smell, about that. I have a favor to ask you. I have been willing to talk to you about this since yesterday, but I haven't seen you at all. Settle down, Nelly, what is it? Father had me engaged without consulting me, and he picked Arthur, that disagreeable little- Oh, right, that. I already know. What? I heard it from Father. That reminds me, you didn't show up at breakfast this morning. I see now. It was because of your engagement. Dearest Mel, is that who you're here with today? In that case, you should get back to him rather than waste any more time with us. You knew I didn't want to get married, Mel. So why? Why didn't you talk to? Why didn't you talk Father out of it? Because it's your time, Nelly. If there's someone else you'd rather be with, then well, you can try persuading Father. But you're you're the only prince for me, dearest Mel. And a prince always grants his princess's wishes, doesn't he? I just want you to say you'll do that for me, dear Smell. Lady Nelly, you stay out of this. It's all your fault. It's all because you showed up and played your little tricks on him. I warned you about this rat, dear Smell. She's not suitable for it. I told you I've had enough already. <gasps> No.
No. No. No, no, no. What was... No. Mel did not just slap Nelly. No. No. No, 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 no. Oh my god, no way. How much longer are you going to continue acting like a child? I can deal with you being a spoiled little girl, but how dare you be so derisive to someone else? Mel, hit me. Oh. Lord Mel. Go on, the show's about to start. People are giving us dirty looks. Return to your betrothed now. I will apologize to him afterwards as well. You said you would always be by my side. That you would always be my prince. Time for make believe is past, Nelly. No, no, I refuse to believe it. I will not have it. Nelly! My goodness, that girl. Are you not going to go after her, Lord Mel? No, just let her go. The only place she even has to go is home. I just wish she started acting a little more like an adult. I imagine Lady Nelly is simply... Hmm? Is she what? No. It just wasn't my intention to get between you. Don't blame yourself. It's not your fault we had an argument. But you two are so close. Well, yeah, we're siblings. So we're close, but nothing more. I do care about Nelly, and I enjoy spending time with her. But she's my sister, nothing more. Anyway, sorry for making such a scene. No, I... I imagine she left her betrothed behind without saying anything, so I'm going to go apologize to him. We have to keep up appearances. Stay here, I'll be right back. Very well. Oof. Master, what are your thoughts on the tale so far? Hmm. Well, okay. Since you asked me, maid. Uh, both Nelly and Mel are going to cause the bad end towards the whole family name in general. Nelly for being so possessive of her brother and Mel for slapping her. I... Because not once did Nelly ever, you know, beat anyone. Like, she never hit anyone. Like, she never inflicted any physical harm on anyone. And on top of that, Mel actually hit Nelly. I feel like Nelly's living in this delusional world. But like, even when she was still a kid, this whole make-believe fantasy, she's still living in it. And that has always been her reality. Like, even though it's make-believe, it may be an illusion to Mel, but it's Nelly's reality. And Mel being inconsiderate of that just struck her down. And that's... I feel like that's kind of what love does at the same time. It, you start behaving differently, and you start detaching from people in certain ways so i feel like that's what's going on here and i feel like both mel and nelly are going to drag the whole family down and everyone related to them that's my thought on the tale so far <laughs> which of the siblings do you think wasn't the right master the brother or the sister <sighs> again they were both none of them were right nelly should you know stay her lame and mel shouldn't have slapped her you know i mean it's hard to say who I feel more sympathetic for, but I feel like the girl in the white hair... It, I don't know. I don't even know how to put it together, but the girl in the white hair, she doesn't want any conflict between the both of them. And I get the feeling that the girl in the white hair is going to detach herself from Mel because she sees that she's the one interfering between the sibling relationship. So the white hair girl is going to be taken out of the picture. Mel's going to become extremely heartbroken and start blaming Nelly, and they're just going to go at it from there. Excuse me, that's that's my take on it, but holy cow. Oh my, I apologize for the abrupt question. Did I startle you? What do I think? Hmm, yes, I believe Mel was probably right. Oh. Please do tell, maid. Explain yourself. He was also surely happier than her, but that, that doesn't matter. As Mel had anticipated, Nelly fled from the theater, leaving her fiancé behind. She forced her way into a carriage, stopped outside, probably one called for a different nobleman, and ordered it to take her home. Mel's assumption was correct. The only place she had to return to was the mansion. The sun was beginning to set, and as a young lady, she could not simply go wandering through town alone. 
nor did she have any acquaintances to take her in. Her world was, in essence, composed of two elements, her brother and the Rose Garden. They were the light of her life at Rose Manor. She lived a very isolated existence. Yeah, the fact that she has no friends, like Arthur pointed out, that is tough. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, I don't think I'm ready for this. Poor Nelly. I mean, I feel for her. <clears throat> I really do. She's still living her little make-believe fantasy that she made a reality. She didn't deserve to get slapped, though. I feel like... Like, I understand she grew up spoiled, but... Maybe just to come to Jesus talk would have been more appropriate, in my opinion. When she escaped back home, Nelly went straight to her room, locked the door, and began sobbing. The waves of her sorrow came crashing effortlessly over the leaves. Tears streamed through the cracked walls of the dams blocking her tear ducts. Uh, why? Why? <coughs> why won't you help me, Mel? Why won't you take my side? The decor in her room appeared blurry through her damp eyes. Memories of the day she had it redecorated played back in her mind with crystal clarity. She told me she had no feelings for you. Oh. She broke some cheese. That liar. That liar. And she let her emotions run wild. Breaking glass, craft works, silver plates designed by famous foreign artisans, flower vases, all sorts of things. It was as though a beast had been set loose in her bedchamber. The vase she tossed shattered against a painting hanging on the wall, spraying water, porcelain, and roses in every direction. It was a portrait she adored so dearly, of her and her bro- Aww. Ah. And what appeared to her like a metaphor for her life, the frame fell off its mounting and came crashing to the floor. Nelly darted over and scooped it up. The frame had broken, but the painting inside was unharmed. <coughs> The two smiling children were still in the very image of happiness, inseparable siblings gently holding on, oh, gently holding one another's hand. My prince is no more. Though in her present state of mind, that image of happiness brought her nothing but misery. And the worse she felt, the more frustrated she grew at the smiling girl and the kind boy of her past. The princess is no more either. You're not a princess anymore, Nelly. Some other woman has taken your place. I trusted you, Mel. I believed you would always be there for me. This painting. It's nothing but a lie. That's not the real Mel. That's not the real me. It's all a big fat lie. A lie. Oh. She ripped it? I wish this painting never existed. That it was never made. That I never had a brother. Jesus. This painting. This painting. Ha. Ah. Ha. Ah. In a fit of emotional distress, she scratched feverishly at the painting she once considered precious. She put more force into her fingers than she or perhaps anyone might have imagined she could. Flakes of paint began falling off the canvas, and in time she noticed something peculiar. What? Huh? What is this writing? Something's hidden beneath the paint? Just a little more. A date? Why would that be hidden? What could it be for? Com... Compo... Hmm? Yeah, I don't know what that's trying to say. Completed. I'm pretty sure that's what it's trying to say. That there's no fill in the blanks. I think she's just reading it slowly. Completed. Completed. May 1580s. Jeez. 1587. She read out loud the faded, scratched up handwriting. <laughs> After staring blankly at the text for some time, the color in her face began to drain. What is this? How? How could this have been painted 16 years ago? Oh. Because she's only 14. And Mel, and Mel is only 17. Whoa, wait, I, I wasn't even born yet then, and Mel would have been just a baby. Is this not me? Is this not Mel? There's still more writing. Urged on by her rapidly pounding heart, Nellie furiously scratched away at the painting. 
Even as her clear pink fingernails were soiled with fragments of paint and blood, she did not stop. She was so overwhelmed by trepidation that she could not stop. She had a horrible premonition that something was about to happen. Something indescribable, incomprehensible. Th this is how I envision your son and our unborn daughter might look several years from now. <clears throat> hmm. Your son and our unborn daughter. So this was a painting of the future. Then it really is of me and Mel. No, use your head stupid. I'm only 14. 16 years ago, I would not have even been inside mother. But then... But then who is this? Who is that holding Mel's hand? Who is that with my brother? More... More, there has to be. Ow. Found it. There's more writing. I have to know. What is this? Calm down. Calm down, Nelly. She's gonna lose it. She's going to lose it. Just judging by the music. Listen. This music scream is nothing but like urgency and revelation. There's no. Oh my gosh. Calm down and read. There's nothing to worry about. If if our unborn child. This is what the writing on the painting said. If our unborn child does not have your hair color, oh no. Then you will probably not be able to take her in as your own. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. I will be punished and my life made miserable. And so I pray that this child might have flax in hair. Though it is a sin to wish she has. Though it is a wish to sin. Though it is a sin to wish she has in her a trace of me. I do hope it is a girl. What am I reading? I don't get it. Someone tell me, what does this mean? A painting from 16 years ago. Hair color. Sin. I do hope it is a girl. Yes? It's Nelly, let me in. Lady Nelly? Oh, you changed out of your dress? That's a shame, it looked nice on you. <laughs> it really did look so nice. Oh, don't kill her. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. Don't kill the girl in white hair, please. Almost like you were a princess. Um, Lady Nelly? Say, I got a question for you. Do you mind? By all means. What color hair did your father have? I beg your pardon? Did you not hear me? Should I repeat the question? No. I assumed it would be about Lord Mel. I'm just so curious about where you got that white hair, that white color from. I, my, my father was more tan than white, so I didn't inherit my paleness from anyone. I asked about your father's hair color. Why would you want to? There's no reason you can't tell me, is there? My father um, had white hair. But that was simply because he was an older man. I do not think he was born with... <laughs> Lady Nelly? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Hey, guess what I... F hey, guess what? I figured it out. I figured it all out. <laughs> and it was so simple. There's only one difference between you and me. The thing that Mel fell for is... Jesus Christ. Don't kill her. I'm gonna be very pissed off. I'm gonna be very pissed off. Don't kill her. Nelly. Nelly, I beg of you. Oh my god. I'm not ready. 
I'm not ready. I heard that noise. No, 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 no. I'm not ready. Don't kill her. Why do you have those? No, stay back. No, 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 please. It was good, it was good character development. There's no way, come on. Oh my god, please no. Please no, both Mel and the girl in white hair had good character development, like individually, not even as a couple together and how they came to be. Oh no, please. She was just starting to open up too. There's come on. Ah, we have finally reached this point in the tale, Master. If your memory has been refreshed, then we can return to the mansion immediately. Very well then. If you insist, Master, we shall proceed with the story. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my god. Please tell me she lived. Have mercy. It was a stormy night, much like the one the white haired girl had first arrived on. It was quiet as a crypt in the mansion, not a single light visible in the hall. The house sat and waited for the sun to peek out over the horizon. The darkness is, generally speaking, something that rushes by like a gust of wind as we sleep. The flaxen-haired young man, too, lay in bed, pale blue moonlight sporadically streaming through the gaps in his drawn velvet curtains as he attempted to submit to slumber. He was having difficulty drifting off, but as time trickled onward, he drew closer and closer to the arms of Morpheus. Hmm. Suddenly, he sensed the presence in the room. Much like the one from those nights some weeks earlier. Oh my god. But it's probably not the girl in white hair. It's probably Nelly. And someone there. Answer. A slender feminine figure pressed gently against his lips. There was no hostility in the motion, but rather a great deal of affection. Your the silhouette faintly visible in the dark room was the same as that night. A flash of lightning shone through the drawn curtains, illuminating her beautiful white hair. Several silky locks spilled, her, spilled over her shoulders and brushed against Mel's cheeks. A couple of soft puffs of air trickled his face as though they were silently laughing. He assumed her finger, held against his lips, was her way of telling him to stay quiet. Was she able to run from her? Please tell me she was able to run. Please, for the love of all that's precious, tell me she was able to run away from Nelly. She began to slowly and delicately trace the outline of his mouth, moving down his cheek along his jawline as if over porcelain. You're rather more forward than I remember. Well, I suppose you always were quite daring. This isn't the first time you sneaked into my bedchamber. I'm still scared. Oh my god. Don't do this. The boy said in an attempt to conceal his surprise. Do you remember the night she came to exact revenge on him for her father? Indeed, she had proven herself to be a rather bold girl once already. It's dark. I can't see you very well. Oh, no. Don't tell me it's Nellie who dyed her hair. Why don't I light a lamp? Or perhaps you could open the... Before he could finish, the white-haired girl sealed his lips with her own. In the near total darkness of his bedchamber, the two shadows appeared as one. They remained that way for several minutes. Their kiss was innocent, no, more than the pressing together of two pairs of lips. And at the same time, the white-haired girl lovingly ran her fingertips across his skin. When their lips separated, Mel gasped for air. It seemed he had been holding his breath. Slightly embarrassed at himself, he said, oh. Dearest Mel, No. No, 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 no. My controller even turned red. No. Nothing. He could not speak. The silhouette hanging above him was certainly the white-haired girl's. Or was it? Because his next words were, Get off me. He reflexively shoved the girl's rattling, straddling him aside. She rolled off the bed, landing on the cold floor, but slowly, gradually, she crawled her way back toward him. That wasn't very nice. Bailed in darkness, she slowly lifted her head. And then, there was another flash of lightning. The 
heavy fabric of the curtains rustled, bolts of light streaming between the gaps. Her flaxen irises glimmered. Though in the bluish white light, they took on a twinge of almost golden glow. No need to be so rough. This isn't the first time she's visited your bedchamber. Is it Mel? Or did I not kiss you the same way? Tell me, how does she run her fingers across your skin? What does she do when she nuzzles up to you? Stop. Stop this madness, Nelly. Why would you... Why would you do this? Because you like white hair, don't you, Mel? You like white hair, which is why you fell for her, isn't it? <laughs> so if I have white hair, then you'll fall for me too. Then I can be your princess again, dear Mel. But what are you even talking about? He could not escape from her, from his sister's piercing gaze. Why? What happened? How could she? Questions crashed into the young man's mind like waves in a stormy sea. But none of them found answers. They simply caused him further perplexity. Your hair. What happened to your hair? How did you get it that color? Oh, God, don't tell me you scabbled her. I'm gonna be sick. Please no. Please no. I'm not ready. I feel like she scalpeled her. Like just bla oh please. Don't. <laughs> you like my wig? But as soon as the words left her mouth, Mel was in motion, propelled by pure instinct. He clenched Nelly's shoulders tight enough to dig his fingers into her flesh. You're hurting me, Mel. What did you do to her? Tell me, what did you do? I made her leave. It was a perfectly reasonable decision. She was obviously not nobility and thus hardly fit to be part of this household. But there's no need to worry, Mel. I'm here to take her place. You sound like a mad woman. It doesn't matter if she was noble blood or not. She promised she would stay by my side. So why? How could you do that to her? Because you promised to stay by Nellie's side and now this is what happened. I promised you that long before she ever did, and I I love you far more than she did, Mel. Have you lost your mind? You're not making any sense. Where is she now? What is she doing? It's always her with you. What more could you want from me? Tell me, what does she have that I don't? What do I have to get you to focus on me and only me? We're siblings. Don't you understand what you're doing? Oh, I understand it quite well. Far better than you do, dearest Mel. I even know that a former queen was executed for it. But, if you don't get caught, there's no problem. Nelly, you, you saying you've always felt this way about me? Oh my, you didn't notice, dearest Mel. You truly are a dense one. I guess romance just isn't your strong suit. But you've noticed it now, haven't you? You know exactly how I feel about you, right? Quit it. Enough. Don't say anything else. Stop. Stop having these insane feelings for me. It's disgusting. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? Poor, poor Mel, content in your complete ignorance. Alright, I'll tell you everything. Mel, you... You can only love blood-related women. What? Huh? His cackling sister appeared to him like some kind of inhuman life form. Her actions and incomprehensible exclamations slowly drained him of his strength. What kind of deranged nonsense is that? I love her. She's your sister Mel. <sighs> Very funny. How far out of your mind have you gone, Nelly? Poor, poor, poor Mel. You honestly know nothing. Say that her father was a pa say that her father was a painter. He painted pictures for a living. What of it? For a time, her father painted for our family. You've seen the picture before, dear Mel. The one hanging in my room of the two of us? Is that what- Keep going. That was painted by her father. <laughs> he did a good job, didn't he? I kept asking and asking until he finally agreed to hold my hand. And how did you feel about that? You were rather embarrassed, weren't you? Do you remember that day, dear Mel? <laughs> you couldn't possibly remember it. But there's a chance you might remember this. 
Before we moved to this mansion, we had a painter with white hair. I, I don't remember any such thing. He was, long ago, a painter in service of the Rhodes family. But that painter did something very, very bad. And because of that, he couldn't remain a part of our household. Oh no. Do you know what he did, Mel? He lay with mother. Oh. Oh my god. Oh. My father was chased from your house. If the child had been born with flaxen hair, then the painter would not have been thrown out. Oh my god. The baby would have been accepted as part of the family, but that wasn't how it turned out. The child had white hair. She didn't look at all like she carried the Rhodes family blood. But see, mother had me. <laughs> that I'm here is all the proof you need. The girl born 16 years ago didn't have flaxen hair. Up until his last breath, he was only ever concerned about me. He held me in his arms and ran his hands through my hair, an apologetic look on his face. You're talking total nonsense. What, what proof do you have? If you want to see it, I'll gladly show you. The artist left a message in the painting in my room. Tell me, am I truly wrong? What did that girl tell you? You're lying. What part of it is a lie, Mel? Everything I'm telling you is the truth. Why don't you go ask Mother? <laughs> I'm sure she would throw quite the fit. Mother wouldn't. The mistress did not send me away when she saw me. So these are the words from the white hair girl that we're reading here. Quite the opposite. She took me in as a servant. It never made sense to me. Why would she hire a maid she knew nothing about? Someone who just showed up at the door one day. And when I asked Mother to make her my maid, she stubbornly refused. From a good house, don't make me laugh. If she were really nobility, she would have given us her name. But Mother was so desperate to cover up her mistake. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I don't believe a word you're saying. It couldn't possibly be true. Ugh. Ugh, so disgusting, but I feel like she is telling the truth. Wouldn't it be nice if you could bury your head in the sand? But Mel, feigning ignorance is a sin. No, I refuse to believe it. Not a chance in hell. You just don't understand anything. How I feel, how much I've suffered. Do you have any idea how long I've loved you? Knowing that you would never accept my affection. But... But then, fancy that! He fell in love with your half-sister. Then I should qualify for your love too. Shouldn't I, Mel? Stop it! Enough! Shut your mouth! Not another word. I... I don't... I don't believe any of this. Mel! <laughs> I know you'll never love me. I know there's nowhere for me to run. Say, when we were kids, was that really me? Was that really by your side, Mel? If that painting tells the whole truth, I was never, never once did I get to be your princess. Not even once. Wow, wow, wow. Oh my gosh. I hope she's telling the truth when she said that she chased the girl out of the house. Oh my god. Dearest Mel, everyone just loves to dote on me. And they're always telling me how pretty I am. Mother does, father does, and all the maids do too. I can do anything I want. So for me, I think like a spoiled child is the only form of rebellion I have. I don't have the kind of freedom you do, Mel. I'm just a doll for the family to play with. When I have visitors, it, it's it's only ever for show. So it's not my fault I don't have friends. Mm. Dearest Mel, you're the one who's ever cared about me more than anything in the world. Dearest Mel, I always knew how you I would react if you fell in love. 
I would cry my eyes out, I would envy her to death, I would get angry as a bull, but eventually I would have given up. I knew I could never have it my way after all, that my feelings would never bear fruit. So why? Why? Did she have to be your sister? Tell me, why? My controller's blue again. That was insane. Oh my god. Wait, why are we back here? Oh dear, Mel, here you are again reading such hard books. Your eyes will go bad if you spend too long staring at pages. I'll be fine, Nelly. It's not like I'm reading 24 hours a day. No, that's not good enough. If your eyes go bad, dear Smelt, you won't be able to see me anymore. <laughs> you worry too much. I can see you fine and well, my princess. Your hair is glimmering like the sun and your beautiful smile. I can see you clear as day, and that'll never change. <laughs> Plus the skies are clear today, so you're even more radiant than usual. <laughs> you know, this is my favorite season. Winter's cold and there's so much rain, I can't stand it. But as it gets closer to my birthday, the clouds go away. And I just adore the sun. Ah yes, it's almost your birthday, isn't it? Have you decided what you're going to ask father for? Not yet. I want pretty dolls and shoes with sparkling gems. And I also want a pretty dress like the one's mother wears. <laughs> a list that long is asking a bit much even for father. But, my dear smell... I already have what I want the most. So the truth is, as long as I have that, I don't need anything else. Oh, and what would that be? It would be you, dear smell. The hairpin they bought for you the other day? Or maybe, the song they had written for you last year? None of that, dear smell. Huh? Then what could it be? Now I'm really curious. What is that so valuable to you? That's a secret. Girls have so many secrets, I just don't know what to do. <laughs> Say, dear smell. Would you run your fingers through my hair? Just for a little bit? What's got into you now, lady? Why are you so hungry for attention all of a sudden? Please, dear smell. Uh, oh, Nelly, what am I going to do with you? Come over here. <laughs> and I want to sit on your lap. Yes, yes, as you wish, my beautiful, beautiful little princess. Say, um, dear smell, what is it this time, Nelly? Right now, I'm so incredibly... Oh, my controller turned red. Happy. <laughs> oh, and out of curiosity, who was it that you really cared for so much about? Who you really cared so much about? My controller's blue, by the way. This is wild. In a fevered frenzy, Mel fled from the mansion. Even in early summer, the night was cold. And to make matters worse, raindrops pelted him from head to toe. But that caused him little discomfort, for a far greater maelstrom of pain rampaged within his breast. At night, the town took on a different appearance. Not simply for lack of illumination, but the people active within it as well. It was not suitable for... Uh, it was not a suitable place for a young aristocratic man to go wandering unattended. The, dark the darkness is not only the abode of devils, but of beggars, thieves, criminals, and all manner of things undesirable. This man is taking a risk, but despite that he continued to run, knowing not where he was headed to. He simply went where his feet took him. He simply went and he arrived at the church. Oh my gosh. Father! Father! God, God should be able to offer me counsel to answer all my questions about that painting, about her, and about Nellie's feelings. Not her lies, but the truth. <sighs> oh no, I feel like she was telling the truth. Open the door! But as you might expect, the door was locked, and the priest showed no sign of responding to his calls. The sound of the pouring rain drowned out everything else. <laughs> His head drooped feebly. He looked like a helpless little calf who had wandered alone onto a dark, precarious mountain path with no end in sight. Why? Why won't anyone tell me the truth? All I want 
All I want for someone to tell me it's not true. Have I sinned? No. I didn't know anything. I didn't know. No. No. None of it is true. So I haven't done anything wrong. I am not at fault. Am I? Nevertheless, his sister's claims and her laughs continue to echo within his head. If he truly believed it to be false, he would have gone to look at the painting. He could not was an indication that uncertainty had a stronger grip on him. Fragmented images of a white-haired painter fluttered through the back of his mind, but he desperately shoved them aside. What good is the church? What good is theology? What good is God? I... What? Something moved near the boy. It stood immediately behind him and grasped his light dressing gown. He had been so consumed in his own world that he had not noticed the person's presence until they were close enough to touch him. What? Who? Are you? Standing there was a beggar dressed in tattered rags. He's still begging at the church? The hooded beggar tentatively extended his hand toward Mel, pleading for relief with sad, slender fingers. Were he a generous young man, Mel would have given the beggar something. Were he generous, of course. Lord. Get your filthy hands off me. I don't have a damn thing to give you right now. Don't you dare touch me. Oh, jeez. Suddenly. Suddenly. The beggar's head turned upward. My eyes catch the beggar's. Oh, don't tell me it's the girl. Her hood fell back, revealing her hairless head. Why? Oh, it's her. And a pair of red eyes gazing bitterly through with a familiar, distinctive glimmer at Mel. Red eyes. She immediately covered her face and turned to run. It can't be. The beggar that's always been here was a... But you said yourself that they would not survive much longer. How could you be certain that she was the same beggar? <gasps> wait! Wait for me! Perhaps as someone of such high social standing, all beggars appeared the same to you? Or perhaps you wanted to believe your meager generosity made a difference, that you did something of value. I would not say it's wrong to think so. Wait for me! I chased after the fleeing girl. Though I shout for her to stop, she continues to run. The rain is so heavy, I'm afraid I might lose her. I'm terrified. But, I didn't do anything wrong, did I? I'm begging you, please stop. I just want to talk. She comes to a stop at a corner. Please do not go around this corner. It's you, isn't it? I am sorry. Why are you apologizing? What I said back there was terrible, and for that I am truly sorry. I didn't realize it was you. Please, come back to me. If you're concerned about social status, I'll figure something out. And Nellie's getting married off soon. Oh, yes, Nellie. Nellie did some horrible things to you. She's lost her mind. She was talking nonsense. But don't worry, she'll be out of the picture soon enough. I'll make sure you're safe. Say something, please. Are you angry? You're angry, aren't you? I am not angry at you. I am not. Did you know everything? Did you come to our house aware of everything? What? Did you? Tell me, please. The priest isn't around and everything Nelly says is a lie. You're the only one who will tell me it's not true. What are you? Our relationship. I don't understand what you're saying. <sighs> ah, I see. You don't know. You don't know. It's for the best. <laughs> Nellie's the only one who knows. She'll be gone before long. Everything will be alright. Lord Mel, it's all, it'll all be alright. Let's go back. I'll make sure you're never put in danger again. I'm begging you, stay with me. My appearance is no longer suitable to stand at your side. You saw how unsightly I looked back at the church, did you not? Hair can grow back. That's not a problem. Now I truly looked the part of the hideous witch. But I am to blame. It was a sin for me to find happiness in your kindness. What are you talking about? Your my sin was falling in love with you. Not what happened to my father, nor how he had to spend our days. There's no sin in that. We have a whole lives ahead of us, don't we? With enough time, this whole tragic mess will be behind us. Things will only get better from here. I'll be your prince, like the one who took the girl to see the outside world. So please, give me, give me your hand. 
Come to me. Don't leave me all alone. Indeed, you by my side. Please. I extend my hand around the corner. I sense her hesitating beyond the bend. I'm begging you. I can't see what's on the other side, but a vision of her reaching out to put her hand in mine was up in my mind. But that story never had an ending. Wow. She doesn't take my hand. I thought the girl ever wrote that letter. Uh, she's not there when I turn the corner. Why? How did things end up like, like this? Where did I go wrong? Oh God. Your error was likely your kindness. Thoughtlessly, haphazardlessly spreading your generosity. But that generosity came from your own desire to avoid pain. For your own happiness. I... I what should I have done? I can't take this. Everyone. Everyone was happy. Nellie used to laugh and smile. She once meant the world to me. How did things end up like this? It's not my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. If you pretend like nothing happened, then perhaps they can go on smiling in your head. But regardless, you must follow the path you tread. It is your path alone. The path you chose when, in that moment, you decided to run. Make the wrong choice in those moments, and you shall find yourself on the road to ruin. I would have, better off. I would have been better off not knowing. Better off in the dark. I just wanted those tranquil days to last. They were supposed to last forever. At some point, your childhood must come to an end, and that ending may not be the one you anticipated. But I can't stand this world. You yearn for a world that would treat you with kindness. What should I do? What should I have done? Someone, please help me. You should return now. If you spend too long out here, you're liable to catch a cold. Now, let us return to our own time. I think Nellie's story was 100% true. The crestfallen young man had faded, faded into the distance, and the decrepit door, double doors clanked shut. Through the shattered glass, you could see only the ruins of a garden, not a single rose growing within. We had evidently returned from the past. In the garden, weeds grew taller than people. You find it difficult to look at. A wolf howled in the distance. The children, the sea of roses, and the white-haired girl were nowhere to be found. You and the maid who you called you master were the only people present in the mansion. What happened to them next? Oh, master, you would know better than I. <laughs> my, you cannot remember. It seems this is quite serious then. Worry not, my loyalty lies with you, master. The mansion had, has witnessed more yet. Let us make our way to the second door. That is wild. Your hand in hers, the maid guided you back through the kitchen and into the tea room. Her palms were still cold. You felt as though you were clenching ice. Master, do you wish to know the truth no matter what may be hidden within? Or, if, if it is something you, you would be happier not knowing, would you rather remain in the dark? Oh, is that so? <laughs> I wonder about their father. Yes, the flaxen-haired sibling's father. Do you think he knew about the white-haired girl? Hmm. Okay. If he did, then perhaps he allowed her to stay because of how deeply he loved his wife. Or maybe because he did not want people to find out about her. I expect he too experienced many different emotions, but those pages of his history remain untold. Their parents likely had a turbulent tale as well, but theirs is not a consequence. To whom? I could not tell you. You and the maid cross through the entrance hall, continuing your trek. At some point, the fire in the fireplace had faded to embers, emphasizing the lack of light within the mansion. The maid took a candlestick and lit it in the cinders. The small flame illuminated her pale face. On a whim, you asked the maid about herself. About me? I am a maid devoted to your service, master, as I have said. Oh, what was that? 
you're interested in my name. <laughs> you flatter me. I truly do appreciate the question, but you're more than welcome to simply call me the maid. I don't know about all that. Just tell me you were the girl in the white hair. That'll be the best plot twist. Top 10 anime plot twist. Let's go. Also, it would make me much happier to hear you say my name after you recalled who you are, master. Okay. Okay, fair enough. A subtle smile rose to the maid's face after which she began to lead you down a first floor corridor. Still holding the maid's hand, you passed in front of a full length mirror and it reflected the warm light of the candle, which disappeared out of range shortly thereafter. Oh my, is something the matter? Did you come across something peculiar? <laughs> the maid had not appeared in the mirror. No, she was not the only one without a reflection. You reached the end of the corridor. There appeared to be a doorway, but the door itself was long since gone, leaving only a hole in the wall to frame the stairs behind it. Without hesitation, the maid descended into the darkness. You have more interest in this mansion, master, than in a mere maid, do you not? Though it pains me to say as much in your presence, master, this house is cursed. Yes, it is a curse that runs deep. As you just bore witness too, the majority of those who dwell within these walls fall into misfortune. I have served here for many years, and periods of happiness are as fleeting as a sugar cube and a cup of hot tea. Why do such tragedies befall them? If I were to guess, Master, it was because you had not returned. But when you remember your true self, the mansion's curse should be broken. The next door bef the next door is before us. It appeared to be the entrance to a cellar. The disconsolate, the disconsolate wooden door was visibly rotten in several places, and it seemed it might crumble at a single touch. You could hear the sound of something devouring meat beyond the door. Maybe there was a beast living within. Before he had a chance to say you thought it was dangerous, the maid opened the door with a chilling smile on her face. Your first impression was that it smelled of blood. 